Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today I will show you the most efficient start, the most efficient character build, and some trading tips and tricks. No matter whether you play as a man or a woman, I recommend starting as the impoverished noble who spent his early life as a page at a nobleman's court, became a squire, which is a lower nobleman, and acted out of personal revenge. Because this will Oh, let us choose this banner. Because this will affect the stats you can see here. Always choose this option, believe me. You want to be able to quit without saving and reload your latest save manually. Believe me, you want this to be you want to do this. So how does the skill system work? The attributes determine how many skill points you can add to skills. For example, the attribute strength determines how many skill points you can put in power strike, for example, which is related to strength. As you can see on the right hand side, the base attribute is strength. If we were to improve strength, we could improve power strike. The most efficient way to start this game is a mixture of trader and bandit killer. It doesn't matter whether you want to become a wassel, a mercenary, bandit, a pure trader, or this is why we chose the impoverished nobleman, a raubritter. In this game, you will always start the same. A Raubritter is a special kind of knight. A knight without a master. A knight who tends more to pillage and plunder instead of administrating the land he was given and fulfilling his military duty to the king. The best English translation I found for the historical term Raubritter was Rubber Knight. So if you want to be a Rubber Knight, a Raubritter, or anything else, you will need to focus on two things, trade and pathfinding. <coughs> the trading skill will enable you to trade very effectively to buy for lower prices and sell for higher prices. This is very important. The pathfinding will make you much faster, especially if you travel alone or with a small band of companions or soldiers. Our charisma is my 9, so we will be able to put 3 skill points into trade. In theory we have 2 skill points left, but I'm gonna show you a trick to increase the number of skill points you have. <coughs> you spend attribute points in intelligence. Because spending points in intelligence will give you 3 skill points. You see, now we have 6 skill points, and of course we are able to level up intelligence related skills pretty high, such as pathfinding. I personally recommend investing the last 3 points you have in prisoner management, as many quests involve capturing soldiers or lords. So 
so you will at least need at least one skill point in prisoner management. The rest of the skill points is at your free disposal. For sake of this tutorial, I will invest them into spotting because this way we see more enemy parties on the map and you can see why I move on the map the way I will do. The weapon points can be spent in whichever weapon type you like. I personally tend to use one-handed and two-handed weapons. So I will put some into both. Let's give this character a name. As I talk too much about Raubritter, I'm gonna call him Raubritter. And now we're done and we can click on done. Hmm. Let's give him black hair. Give him a nice haircut. Or at least a haircut that isn't that ugly. Hmm. This one looks cool. And yeah, it will work. <coughs> and I recommend starting at. Hmm. Yes, radio, because there are less looters and less brigands and less robbers. <coughs> now we will have to face one single robber who will try to kill us. As I said, I'm focusing on melee combat, so me missing the hit wasn't that bad. Oh, well, it was a bad shot, but as I'm not a good shot, I don't care. <laughs> so this merchant will save us, or at least ask how we are. Here, you could do a tutorial quest if you answer him you're interested in his offering. But this guide is not about the tutorial, but it's about the most efficient and effective start. So we are not interested in this. And we can leave this by pressing tab. So, the easiest way to gain profit, to make money, is to do as I do now. You enter a town, go to the marketplace. And just click on here. You look at the highest paying item, which is grapes, and selling them at Valuka will give you the highest amount of dinars. So we're gonna buy the grapes and travel to Valuka. How do we find Valuka now? We open the notes with N or by clicking on notes. Then we go to locations and as it is sorted alphabetically, we will find Valuka down here. Then we go on shown map. And you see, we found Valuka south of Braven, where we spawned. So I know where Voluka is, I memorized it. So now I will try I will slowly and avoid enemies. You see? I'm pretty damn fast. I have an absurd velocity. My speed is 9.1, which is really, really high. Normal parties travel at a speed between 3 and 6. 
and we got 9.1. We are the fastest being on the map, I guess. The fastest entity moving around. Now, we can sell this. You see, we made profit. We sold it at a much higher price than when we bought it. The second way, and this way is actually more efficient to gain money is you go to the market again, but before you access the local prices, which is enabled by your trading skill, you have a look at the bears and try to memorize roughly what they are worth. For example, this is pretty expensive, but the bread here, and the grain and the cabbages are pretty low. So you could buy them low and try to sell them for a profit. Let's hope that the assess to the local prices will tell us where to sell the stuff. We buy the cheap grain and sell it directly at yellow color. Oh, not again. Oh, for regans. This is not that hard to beat. Yes, okay. So we move now. You see, they try to follow us, these bandits, but we are faster than they are. So this is actually why you need pathfinding. To follow your character around the map and avoid any threat that might come. I mean we are faster than them then we are faster than they are. And no. We're able to pass the bridge without any danger. And of course we sell the grain. For a small, small, small profit. <coughs> you want to go to Oxcal because this is the only thing we could afford. Go to the market, sell the grain for a small profit. <laughs> Access the local prices and focus now on wine. Oh no, it's not enough wine to be profitable. To play this effectively, effectively you want to have at least two or three or four items to buy and to sell. Because if you don't have that many items, the actual effort you have to put into the travel avoiding the bandits is not worth the money you get. Except for the trade in Velvet. Velvet is worth the effort, although you only have one or two items to sell. Because it pays so much if done rightly. So, what I will do is now travel around, sell some stuff, buy some stuff, and make some profit. And for you, only one second will pass, for me, around 10 minutes, and then we'll see each other again, and I will show you something different, which is quite lucrative. In which is why we actually did all this trading and bandit avoiding stuff. See you soon. So guys, we're back at Uxal. And I'm gonna show you my inventory. Although I just stick with this fish and it didn't diminish that much because I'm one single person that consumes this huge amount of fish. This is why I, cons um, I advised you to use pathfinding and try to focus on speed instead of many P 
people in your army because this saves you actually money because you see one pile of smoked fish actually lasted for around 15 minutes well of what I actually wanted to show you is this I got lots of money I was even able to buy a pretty good armor yes a rusty helmet but well we are Raubritter we don't need Polish helmets where we are going don't we How did I manage to get that much money? Well, first of all, I exploited the villagers. Because you see, villagers have quite low prices. You remember, the grain we were able to buy in towns was around 33 to 40 dinars. This instead costs only 21. So. No matter in which town you sell it, you will always make profit with these low-priced goods from villagers. Of course you have to keep an eye open. This pork, for example, might not be that profitable. We will try and sell it for a higher price. Let's have a look around. Oh, the best town to go to is Suno, I guess. Right now. And, yep, without any problem. Yeah, we can sell the pork with a profit. We can sell the grain for a huge profit. And we made 110 dinars only with two items sold. So if you're able to find a village that sells lots of grain or other cheap items in high quantity, if you're able to find a town that pays lots of money, 40 squares, you are settled. You can make 500 or even 1000 dinars with one single trade then. The other thing I wanted to show you to generate profit is the following. You will enter a town, you will take a walk around the streets and you will look out for the guild master. The guild master is a man who's usually well dressed and doesn't move around at all. But once you found him, just remember where you found him and you are settled for the rest of the game. Because actually you need only a handful of guild masters to make lots of profit. In theory in theory only one Guildmaster could be sufficient for our goal. I found him. You see, he wears a fur coat, and I see him next to the table in Suno. Um, in theory, you only need one Guildmaster to be a profitable privateer. But in reality, as some things fluctuate, such as, for example, the output of villagers, because if they are raided or infested by bandits, villagers don't produce that much resources that can be used in productive enterprises, and productive enterprises is the thing that we want to get now. Um, as villagers fluctuate, and even towns fluctuate in their production of resources, this goal cannot be achieved with one guild master. But in theory it could if you were able to create a stable economical environment. This could be your personal goal, for example. If you are a king or a vassal and own a castle or in this case a town, you could try to stabilize the settlements around the town and the town itself and save it from bandits and enemies those creating an economically stable environment and a stable output of raw material, of resources, which then you can use in your own enterprises. So how do we build an enterprise? We select these options and the guildmaster will tell us how profitable this is right now. 
and if it's not profitable at all, like this, we just deny it. Then we click again on Enterprise and have a look at the next option. The brew beer, for example, is okay. It's around 100 dinars per week, which is not that bad. But the heights, for example, are much better. But in my opinion, still not good enough. Let's see what the maximum amount of money is we could get from this enterprise with this guild master. Oh, this is horrible. Hmm. Oh. Excuse me, I am uh, not as profitable as other things we already saw. So, in my opinion, nothing of this is really good, but oops, this is the wrong option. But we will choose, for the tutorial's purposes, the best option that we could get, which are the heights. We have to pay eight thousand dinars, and in the long run, we will receive around two hundred and seventeen dinars a week. Of course, as he already said, these prices are not guaranteed on the long run. They will fluctuate a bit. But 200 dinars is what we can count on. That's it. We lost 8,000 dinars. We bought an enterprise. And in theory, we could just wait in this town. And wait for the profits to roll in after a few weeks. For you, I will skip some time. I will fast forward and for you again, only a few seconds will pass. For me, a few minutes will pass and then we will see if this was as efficient as I hoped it would be. Through the town menu, I was able to enter my tannery and talk to the master tanner. And as you can see, his profit is even higher than what the guild master prom promised us to be. You can ask the guildmaster many interesting things. For example, he could explain you the options related to production. This is actually quite important. As we have already a high trading skill, we can try to buy hides, which is the raw material we need for this tanner, at villages, as they tend to have stable and cheap prices, all in all, and bring them to him, and then put these into this inventory of his. This could have a very profitable outcome for us if we were able to manage this. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Goodbye.